and the blue of the night makes the gold of the day. in Hollywood with John Scott Trotter, his orchestra and chorus, with Jerry Pierce, Skip Henderson, and Vince Guest, the charming chanteuse Peggy Lee, and Jerry Beaverlip Colonna. And here's Bing Crosby himself. No other Bing Crosby program can make that fit. <laughs> Give me five minutes more, only five minutes more. Let me stay, let me stay in your arms. Here am I begging for only five minutes more, only five minutes more of your charm. All week long I dreamed about our Saturday day. Don't you know that Sunday morning you can sleep late? Give me five minutes more, only five minutes more. Let me stay, let me stay in your arms. Give me five more, give me five more. Let's rock at thank minutes more. Thank you, John Scott and group, for giving us a solid five minutes more. Now, wait, isn't that misleading, Bing? Actually, we've got five minutes less. Oh, this is getting too involved, Ken. Call me a cab. No, 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 wait, Bing. I only mean that while you were pleading so eloquently for five minutes more, Christmas was getting that much closer. Oh, hard so, thought. Hard already, thought. we've got five minutes less to buy that new Philco radio for Christmas. Is that likely to cause static among the holiday shoppers? Hmm? Now, you don't understand, Bing. Don't you realize that this Christmas the Philco dealers have the biggest selection of new Philco radios and radio phonographs since before the war? Yeah? Well, then why is Santa Claus breathing down your neck when you've got so much to pick from? Ah, uh -uh, that's just it, Bing. Oh. So you want to give something new and different for Christmas. Now, how are you going to choose between a brand new invention like Philco's new kind of radio phonograph, the 1201, and, uh, well, say that marvelous Philco portable? They're both new and different. Now, doesn't every minute count when you're up against a tough decision like that? All your cares are just foolish fancies. I'm given a few Philco's for Christmas myself. And I didn't find it so tough to pick them. Any one of them does the trick. For instance, you can take a little... It's... What's the idea of playing Tommy Dorsey's theme song? Well, if you think he can do any better, get him. <laughs> he bubbles in there, sound like Chip Fields. <laughs> That's uh, the little uh, mustache getting in the way I there. I thought so. There's that a, was a filter type tone. Filter tone. That was very interesting. <laughs> Besides, you know, I lost all my music in a wreck this morning. What wreck? The one I had at 9 o'clock this morning. I was hit by a truckload of transcription. Yeah? My head went right through the windshield. Why, Kelowna, that's awful. Ah, uh, yes. Help! Doctor, iodine, bandages. Which time? Whoop, now, if you were hit at 9 o'clock this morning, why are you screaming for bandages now? It was a transcribed accident. <laughs> you know, and besides, my head went through the windshield earlier, but I'm bleeding at this more convenient time. <laughs> More convenient times a pretty good idea there, Prof. A fellow could do a radio show that way. Confidentially, uh, how's the program coming along? Well, we're doing one every week, Jerry. We're all in there punching. And just between you and me, Crosby, you could use some more glamour on this show. You mean besides me? <laughs> besides you, they couldn't get up to the microphone. <laughs> hey, I, I've, I've taken the liberty. Your, hope I, edited your script. No, no, Let me I, see. I, I guess not. I, I've taken the liberty of bringing along three of Hollywood's most beautiful and significant guys. First, yeah. presenting Miss Sonia Henney. Ah, Sonia, what a figure eight you've got. 
And thank you very much. You look uh, never looked lovelier. And now MGM's beautiful mermaid, Miss Esther Williams. <laughs> thank you, Esther. You never looked lovelier. And now Paramount's Pelcratude in this package, Dorothy Lamore. I see you've got on a brand new sarong, my dear. Take a bow. <laughs> you never looked lovelier. <laughs> well, Kelly, those, those girls were grand, but now, if you don't mind, I'd like to introduce a re real live doll. She does a great song, too. Lovely, vivacious, a willowy blonde. You mean Sketch Henderson? No, Cologne. No. <laughs> I mean the gal whose special brand of vocalizing is making jukeboxes jump from Jackson Heights to Jasper Park. Miss Peggy Lee. Thanks, Bing. You got a song for us, Peg? Well, I'd like to do Linger in My Arms a little longer, baby. Hmm. I'll stand close by in case you need a lingerer, hmm? <laughs> Peggy's husband, Dave Barber, on the guitar there. It's very sultry, Peggy. Très romantique. Which brings us to old Buttermilk Sky. Can't you see my little donkey and me? 
were as happy as a Christmas tree Heading for the one I love I'm gonna pop her the question That question Do you, darling, do you do? It'll be easy, oh, so easy If I can only bank on you Old buttermilk sky I'm a telling you why Now you know Keep it in mind tonight Keep a brush and those clouds from sight Old buttermilk sky Don't you fail me when I'm needing you more When the moon above a hitching pole Hits me to the one I love You can if you try Don't tell me no lie Will you be mellow and bright tonight But a milk guy Crosby, what's the next? Well, along about here, Jerry, I plan to do what I think is a really beautiful old ballad that has had much hit parading lately. It's a very dreamy number, really. Say, is there any truth in the current report that you fall asleep right in the middle of your slow number? Hmm? Well, I... I may... I may doze a little, Jerry, but I don't ever remember falling completely asleep. Now, you know, your worries are over, Bing. I have just the thing to fix it. Listen. Hmm? See? Alarm clock. Well, I didn't think it was the bells of St. Mary's, no. <laughs> oh, Anyhow, at this point, I'd like to call upon a very capable and talented blonde. Peggy Lee? No, it's Emerson. <laughs> Gibbs and I are going to do if you were the only girl in the world. If I were the only girl in the world, I'd shave off my mustache. Meanwhile, I'll stand by with my alarm clock. Oh, I think I'll stay awake, all right. Yes, but what about the audience? <laughs> you got quite a thought there. Well, go ahead, croon it. I'll do my best. wonderful things to you there would be such wonderful things to do I'll just <laughs> I'm not asleep just because my eyes were closed that's emotion <laughs> that's emotion yes I guess so <laughs> if you the only girl in the world And I were the only Thank you. 
nothing to mar our joy. I would say such wonderful things to you. Such wonderful things to do If you were the only girl in the world And I were the only That was uh, If You Were the Only Girl in the World, vocal by B. Crosby, S. Henderson at the Steinway, J. Colonna at the Big Ben. <laughs> this this uh, is no time for levity, Crosby. I'm in a very depressed mood. What's wrong, Jerry? Well, here it is well nigh, and Mama hasn't taken me to see Santa Claus yet. Well, well nigh. <laughs> yes. Well, we'll fix that right now. Peggy Lee, if you'll join me here at the middle mic, we'll try to bring Master Jerry a little yuletide cheer. John Scott, uh, will we have a little department store Santa Claus music, please? Well, here we are. Isn't this a nice big store, Jerome? Yes, Mother. Oh, look. I want that, Mama. Buy me that. Buy you what? That, right behind that sign that says three ninety eight. Why, too bad, boy. That's the sales girl. <laughs> I know, but three ninety-eight. She's a bargain. <laughs> oh look, there's Santa Claus over there. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> <laughs> get Bonzel to play this. He could play this. <laughs> Gather around, kiddies, and tell Santa what she wants for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Evil-looking old goat, isn't he? <laughs> well, well, well. Hello there. Here's a fine, sturdy specimen. Why, what nice muscles we have. Take your mittens off my mother. It's <laughs> on, red pants. Say, what, a, what are you going to give me for Christmas? Well, let me see now. Do you want me to bring you a nice doll for Christmas? Heck no. All I want is a fair shake from the dame I got now. <laughs> Say, how old are you, Dillinger? Well, I... I don't know. I haven't shaved in quite a spell now. Well, you'll have to excuse Jerome Sander. He's sort of a half-wit. Good. I, I can give him a sled with one runner. <laughs> oh, you smell from reindeer. <laughs> That's no way to talk about Donner and Britson and Pranson and Dancer. They're our friends. How would you like to come for a nice ride in Santa's sleigh? We'll go high over the rooftops of the world. Up! Up, up, across the clouds and over the moon. How would you like that, little boy? What's the matter, you crazy or something? <laughs> now, come on, Jerome. Tell Santa Claus what you want for Christmas. I want an Eversharp pen that writes underwater. <laughs> but, Jerome, you won't be able to write for three years yet. Here's the pen, Sonny. Now, jump in this tub of water. I'll hold you on it till you learn. <laughs> I see something I like. I'll just put on these roller skates. There, now for a nice ride through the store. Whee! <laughs> Jerome, you're heading straight for the China Boy, department. Boy, look at him. He's going to land right in the middle of a thousand cups and saucers. Oh, Jerome, look out. There he goes. Oh, what a crash this will be. Jerome, whatever happened, you smashed into that whole counter full of dishes and we only heard one cup break. How come? I get enough noise on the Hope Show. <laughs> the part of Jerry Colonna's mother in the preceding clam bake was played by Peggy Lee, who denies the allegation in every particular. 
Let me, uh, let me ask you a question, Crosby. Hmm. Why did I ever leave Wyoming? I don't know. Why did you leave Wyoming? <laughs> Fell right into my trap, old boy. Music. I've been hoped. <laughs> Why, oh, why did I ever leave Wyoming? Why, oh, why did I ever have to go? Why, oh, why did I ever leave Wyoming? Cause there is someone back there looking for me high and low and oh, oh. Give me back my prairie and my saddle and wild game Where the hills are nice and curvy and the women are the same Where skies are always bluer and the cowboy sounds are sad with men are punching cattle and mothers punching dad. Oh, why, oh, why did I ever leave Wyoming? Why, oh, why did I ever have to go? Why, oh, why did I ever leave Wyoming? Because there is someone back there looking for me high and low and high and low. I tried my hand in Cody Rank and Coles for Bunk and Beans. When the foreman said, let's bust a bronc, I shook right in my jeans. Climbed up on the saddle and I raked him with my spurs. The next thing I remember, they were picking out the birds. Oh, why, oh, why did I ever leave Wyoming? Why, oh, why did I ever have to go? Why, oh, why did I ever leave Wyoming? But there is someone back there looking for me high and low and high and low. I used to live in Cheyenne, that's a lovely place to see. You can ride along the rolling plains just east of Laramie. The sheriff almost caught me, and that's why I have to roam. He saw me working in a bank and taking samples home. Oh, why, oh, why did I ever leave Wyoming? Why, oh, why did I ever have to go? Why, oh, why did I ever leave Wyoming? Because there's a sheriff back there looking for me high and low and high and low. You fellas hit him off at the gulch. I'll get him when it comes through the draw. He's dead. Little Beaver, it's Happy Hitch Crosby in the posse. Let's hit the trail. <laughs> Now, while the deputy sheriff from Jackson Hole, Cornish Colonna, stands him on his head to shake some of the dinero out of his jeans, I'd like to have another word with Peggy Lee. Right here, Bing. Peggy, I heard one of your new tunes on a record the other day, one you wrote. I'd like to learn it. Which tune is that, Bing? I think it's called It's a Good Day. Oh, yes. Well, why don't you run through it with me right now? Sure beats Braxton by myself. <laughs> you catch me if I slip, will you, Ma? All right. Hang on tight. Here we go. <laughs> Yes, it's a good day for singing a song. And it's a good day for moving along. Yes, it's a good day. How could anything be wrong? A good day from morning till night. And it's a good day to shine the shoe. And it's a good day for losing the blue. Everything to gain and nothing to lose. A good day from morning till night. To the sun, good morning, sun. Rise and shine today. You know you gotta get going if you're gonna make a showing, and you got the right of way. Cause it's a good day to pay your bills, and it's a good day for curing your ill. So take a deep breath and throw away the pills. Cause it's, it's a, a good, good day from morning till night. Good morning, sun, good morning, sun, rise and shine today. You know you got to get going if you're going to make a showing, and you've got to ride away. Cause it's a good day for killing your ill. And it's a good day for paying your bills. So take a deep breath and throw away the pill. Cause it's a good day from morning to night. A good day from morning till night. A good day from morning till night. A good day from morning till night. 
a swell thing in Peggy Lee. And Peggy, do you mind if I latch on to a piece of that lyric about rise and shine today? You know you got to get going if you're going to make a show on it. Please, Kenneth, take off your sneakers. We know what's coming. We give you the right of way, Philco man. There you go. Well, Bing, I hope the listeners will, too, because this sure is a good day to get going on picking out that Philco radio for Christmas. To help you get started, Philco suggests five different ways to make anybody's Christmas brighter and better. For instance, if you've got a teenage youngster on your list, you couldn't possibly miss with Philco's new 1201, a radio phonograph where you just put a record in the slot and it plays. Then there's that sensational Philco portable for the gal you'd like to travel with permanently. Or the table model radio phonographs with the automatic record changer. And if you want to give the family a big moment, don't forget that the big sets are back this Christmas. Those fine Philco console models you haven't been able to buy since before the war. Plus a whole flock of brand new table model radios for your sisters and your cousins and your aunts. Are you still awake, folks? <laughs> you, Jerry. They're awake because they've been waiting for years for this moment when they can buy a new radio again and be sure it's a Fulco. Famous for quality the world over. A Gershwin ballad gaining great popularity now. For you, for me, forevermore. The other... For you, for me, forevermore, it's bound to be forevermore, it's plain. Found by finding each other the love we waited for. I'm yours, you're mine, and in our Scamper to my Philco 1201 to tune in on Henry Morgan. I want to say it's been charming, really delightful. We'll be back again next week at the same time with a whole caboodle full of mirth, merriment, melody. Also, I'm expecting Jack Benny to drop in. Good night. <laughs> Good night, all. This program is produced and transcribed in Hollywood by Bill Morrow and Murdo McKenzie. Tune in to Philco Radio Time next week and hear Bing Crosby, John Scott Trotter, his orchestra and chorus, the charioteers, Sketch Henderson, and Bing's guests. Jack Benny and Mary Livingston. And remember, this Christmas, give a Philco. Famous for quality the world over.